Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Javier who is going to be another Telltale character coming to Road to Survival and he does visually look different than what we're kind of used to seeing Javier you know he has the jacket on that's the thing that's getting me he's got the jacket he's got the hat uh, but we do have the shirt that he normally wears underneath and I'm, I'm thinking I think he wore jeans I don't think he wore these sort of shoes is it, these are basically like baseball cleats, right? He's going for the baseball look. He's got the baseball bat. This is a default weapon, but he has got the baseball bat there. He does have the catcher's mitt on his belt as well. Um, and then obviously he's got his normal animation as a strong character. He's just going to be swinging the bat around. If we look on the left-hand side, we do see the avatar of him as well. And we do see that he's wearing the hat here. So it is a unique avatar. We also see the tattoo on his neck. So this is based at the end of season three or after season three. So this is interesting. This is interesting from a telltale perspective. We do see his stats with 30 veteran rings. He has got quite low attack, 2,580, 4,780 defense and 4,704 HP. So really, really on to the defensive side of things. I mean, he has got twice the attack of the trader still, but... This is very high defense and HP. That means that the base stats can get enormously high on a defense team with the right leader. He ha it is a strong character, like I said before. He is considered a support character as well with the uh, support role. So that's going to be interesting on top of things. We will take a look at his rush, and it is called Hunker Down. It's a 66 AP rush, so quite fast. This character gets 100% defense for two turns. All adjacent teammates get camouflage for two turns. While battling on the defense team, all adjacent teammates get 50% AP. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is going to be actually really, really powerful. Him getting 100% defense, obviously, he's just going to get a massive defense boost. It's going to be very hard to take him down. This isn't going to be up 24-7. There is going to be a turn where he doesn't have 100% defense. But he's going to be rushing real quick. He can be commanded turn two with this. So that's going to be pretty nice. The adjacent teammates getting camouflage means that no AoE damage is going to work. No rampage damage is going to work. It's going to be very, very nice at stopping, you know, extra damage on rushes. Everyone getting camouflage means that if someone gets taken out by a Priya, like let's say on the very first attack on Priya's rush, her secondary hits will just stop. She will not attack anymore. It won't go to a second character. It just stops her rush. It's kind of crazy how it works with Priya. And then obviously the bonus AP on a defense team, 50% extra AP for everybody. That is, that is actually just next level. Okay, so as you can see, we have got Havi on the defense here. He isn't the leader because he has got a leader skill and I want to show that separately, but... How it's going to work is the adjacent characters, when Javier rushes, will get camouflage and a 50% AP gain. I haven't got a very good weapon on the character at the top, Carrie Anne, and obviously Rick's going to command, so he's not going to gain any AP from commanding. But they will both get their rushes because of this 50% AP gain. I'm just going to attack one more time with Beta. What should, are you going to see a big AP gain from Rick? As you're going to see, the rush is going to come off, then you're going to see 100% defense onto Javi. You're also going to see camouflage onto the adjacent teammates as well. And basically what that means is I can get my rush with Beta and Beta's got a very big rush. Now I haven't given Javi here any sort of mods. He has got a little bit of a defensive weapon. I'm not sure if this is going to take him out. He has got a 100% defense boost here and we'll see. But what, what you're going to see is normally Beta would be a triple hit on his rush. But these two characters obviously are not going to take any damage at all. So the rush is going to come out. And you're going to see the animation. And actually it's a double hit. But it can take down extra characters because of his Waste Not. But Waste Not won't even work. And you see that's an unmodded Havi here. And because of that 100% defense boost. He's obviously going to have a much better time at taking those hits. So obviously his adrenaline rush is really good. The first two parts will work on an attack team if you wanted to for some reason use him on an attack team. And the last part would only work on a defense team. Now the all adjacent teammates getting 50% AP I can see coming into some really, really nice usage. Because there is potential for that to basically be him commanding three players on turn two. You see the way it will work is turn one he'll do a basic attack. 
Turn two, he'll do another basic attack or his active, but I will show his active in a minute. It does give enough AP that he gets his rush naturally for turn two. If he gets commanded turn two and he rushes, he gives 50% AP to all adjacent teammates. One of those being the command that he's just been commanded by, so we're not going to ignore that person. The three other characters would generally get enough AP to rush naturally turn two. So basically, if they don't take their basic attack before Havi does his rush, and they shouldn't if he's the one who's getting commanded, you could have four characters rush turn two with no AP gain weapons. That's going to be actually just next level insane potential. And if you've got good controlling characters on defense teams, it's actually the, the, the level of danger that that's going to pose is going to be absolutely insane. Now we will go across and look at this active skill and it is very nice. Normalize, stun and AP gain. It has an initial cooldown of two, cooldown of two, number of uses five. Up to two enemies get normalized and stun for two turns. This character gains 50% AP. Now the characters getting normalized and stunned means their specialist skills won't work. And if they get stunned, it means their third slots on their weapons won't work. So it's effectively like a disarm if they get stunned. And that means that you're free to rush them with multi-hit rushes and have no consequences. Obviously, the normalize on certain characters, payback, bide. There could be some repercussions from rushing those sort of characters. That's not going to be the case in this situation. This character gaining 50% AP does obviously mean that on turn two, like I said before, they could just use this active, get their rush, and be commanded for the just the absolute chaos that could ensue after the turn two command rush but it means they're going to have a natural rush regardless even if they're not the one that gets commanded so it's always actually okay for this active skill to go off generally speaking i'm always like oh this active goes off you lose a turn that's not going to be the case and because he doesn't do any real damage and you're going to make him very defensive because his rush is fully defensive you don't really care if he basic attacks or not if anything it can be beneficial that he doesn't just so he doesn't get like stunned by someone or impaired by somebody or something like this. Sometimes just doing an active is actually beneficial, especially if it's a dangerous one like this. It means that people will try and focus him and try and daze him and try and stop him from doing this. And that basically means you're taking the pressure off of your other characters on a defense team onto Havi, who's going to be so defensive that you kind of don't care too much about it. Okay, so this is the same situation as before, but this time I did not daze Havi. What he'll do is his active skill, he will be commanded when he does his active skill as well. Just so you can see what's going to happen. He'll do his active, be commanded by Rick. If you have a command, that will generally always happen on turn two. Someone will always be commanded. And you'll see two of my characters can potentially be stunned, but two of them should be normalized. We'll have a little look. Let's see what happens. Active. We do see the normalized come in. I think I resisted one stun and then he gets command rushed. So you can see Rick is now normalized. He's no longer a command. And obviously Beta is also normalized, but he is also stunned. And that's what's going to come in. Two specialists can be stunned. I think if it hits your leader, obviously they can't be normalized because they don't have a specialist skill. And that can potentially happen. It can hit a character that doesn't have a specialist skill. Let's say you're running double Priyas. It could hit a Priya and it just doesn't really do anything with the normalized half of things. But the stun will always hit. It's just whether they resist or not. So I like the active a lot. I like obviously the combo where it's just like active command rush for turn two. All of it coming out. All of the, the buffs on the teammates. All of the potential debuffs on the enemies. Very, very nice. So obviously the active skill's nice. It works nicely in conjunction with the rush. This guy is massively like a sort of disorientating character against the enemy. And also obviously just buffing his own team. Trying to keep them protected against like big multi-hits. That sort of thing. So I like it a lot. But this is not all that Javi has to offer. He is obviously a leader. And you can see that blue leader skill in the bottom right hand corner. That means he is a defense team leader. And his leader skill is all strong and tough teammates get 40% defense and 40% HP. But all enemies get minus 50% attack for the first two turns at the beginning of each wave. And this is going to be countering... The nuke teams basically that come in with Dr. Stevens, pretty much the team I run, where you come in and you're rushing in the first two turns, you're trying to blitz the opponent down. Now there is a counter out for this at the moment, obviously the release of Kenny means that you can buff your entire team's attack while they would also be having debuffed attack. So it would, it would kind of just be like back to normal in that situation. 
but this is dangerous otherwise minus 50 percent attack is no joke especially against characters like Havi when he's got that huge amounts of base defense and hp potential and that buff on top he's not going to be taking any damage himself and there's no doubt going to be very defensive teammates around him with that 40 percent defense and 40 percent hp leader skill this is where things can just get absolutely out of control when it comes to the kind of characters you can use with him. There is a small downside in terms of I don't think that strong teammates on defense have the best four slots, but tough ones definitely have some nice ones with the bonus HP and stuff like that. So the combination you can get some pretty nice defensive combos in there with the characters. Okay, so just to show you how it works, I'm attacking Javi as the leader and he has given minus 50% attack to all of my attack team. A very overly offensive attack team here. I have got a Georgia here who has got 10,000 HP and 7,500 defense. She has got no combat mods right now. This is just to show you like not that much in terms of defense and stuff that she can get. And you can see the sort of damage you're just not doing to her. Not doing much damage at all. We're looking at our hundreds, hundreds, whereas you normally would see like multiple hundreds come out because of the extra defense and HP that you're getting from the leader skill and the attack down, the combination is, is brutal. And then combat mods piled on top, she could easily get, you know, an extra, what, 1,500 to 2,000 defense or HP, however you want to do it, and that could easily reduce the incoming damage once more. So a very, very nice leader skill for sure. The issue I see with the leader skill, however, is there are not that many good, or at least a wide range of, tough defense team characters that are out right now. And I think we do definitely need more. The ones I was using there are pretty much two of the three. I think there's Frost. I mean, unless you want to start using Priya on your defense team, I think you want to use a really tanky team with this guy. So I think they're probably going to be releasing tough defense team characters maybe some more strong defense team characters as well we have got a few strong defense team characters that exist at the moment but tough defense team characters will probably be you know coming out with this guy in the future but the options for the four slot on the weapons you know bonus hp from tough characters is very very nice like i said before the only problem is the option for strong characters is not very good i think it gives attack to everybody so not very defensive so on the team player that is so not very defensive but you can maybe get some extra side ones in there could be some nice little gimmicks that you can come up with or you can just kind of look for self buffs like stone wall or ransack these sort of things to be just more uh, running interference with this sort of guy you know the, the, the sort of a defense teams where they're just really frustrating and kind of not what you're used to now when it comes to his weapon he does not have an attached weapon so you can put whatever weapon you want just straight into his hands if you have that weapon already built up healing stun weapon for instance with ransack or something could go into his hands he's going to be stealing buffs he's not going to be doing basic attacks too often though because he has that turn to active that will be going off and you're going to be quite happy that that goes off so he won't be doing basic attacks too often so maybe something where it's more defensive where it's based on him being hit rather than him doing hits so maybe ap down or you know something like that or, or stone wall would be actually pretty good on this character so the potential of Javi, I think, is great as a leader. He does just need, I think, a couple more good defense team characters coming out that are tough. Tough is quite weak defensively. We've actually been talking about this a little bit on my stream recently where there just aren't that many defensive tough characters. That There aren't that many offensive strong characters. So certain traits are just kind of imbalanced. So there are some mismatches across the traits. But I think potentially in the future, if we do get more defensive characters come out that can work with Javi, that are tough, maybe that are strong as well, he's going to be a great, great leader. There are a lot of good, strong characters out at the moment, especially if you've got the World Champions Georgia. So you've got potentially like Georgia, Deus, Michonne's, Ricks. So strong characters alone will be pretty good. You could potentially use Frost, Shiva, Princess as the main defensive characters as well to work with this character. So he has still already got potential with characters that exist, but I do foresee there being some more defense team characters coming out in the future that can work with Javi here. But do tell me what you think about Javi as an S-class character. What do you think about his rush, his active, his leader skill? He is, of course, a Telltale character, so I will no doubt be doing a 10 pull for this guy. But I'm probably going to do it late in his promo, just in case I can do a little bit more pulls. We'll have to see. I'm debating doing a little bit more. But that is the end of my video. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.